Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my best method for setting up a rotary chuck on a fiber laser machine. Throughout this setup video, we're going to be seeing, I'm gonna bounce between the rotary chuck and settings within Lightburn software. I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth quite a few times. I wanna let you know that this is only for the first initial setup of the rotary chuck. Stick around to the end of the video and I'm gonna share with you the settings within Lightburn software that once we set them, I don't have to go back and readjust them each time I use the rotary chuck. I'm also gonna share with you at the end of the video the one or two settings that I do need to adjust the next time I go to use my rotary chuck. The machine that I'm going to be using today is the Monport GI30 fiber laser machine. Don't worry, this best method of setting up the rotary chuck is going to work on, well, virtually any fiber laser machine on the market today. I'm going to start out by making sure that the power is off on the machine and then I can plug the rotary chuck into the back of the machine. My rotary chuck has a four pin connector making it very easy because the back of my machine only has one plug that this will fit. Next, I'll be picking a direction for the rotary chuck to face. The rotary chuck can be mounted in the north position, the west, the east, and even the south. My preference and recommendation is to mount it in the west position. That's because I'll be able to easily align the center line of the chuck to the center line of the lens. We're gonna check that out in just a minute. One important thing to note, the mounting screws that come with the rotary chuck are M6 screws. The mounting deck on this integrated fiber laser machine is M5. That means I had to run out to the hardware store and get two M5 screws that are 15 millimeters long. When I mount the rotary chuck, I want to make sure that I've got these side slots that are in the front. If yours is reversed, all you have to do is loosen up and remove these four screws. This plate can come off, rotate, and go on, and that way I've easily flipped the mounting plate. I left the screws loose just a little bit because I'm still going to need to set the final position and be able to wiggle this back and forth a little bit. We're also going to see that while well, half of the rotary chuck is hanging off the machine, this is perfectly normal. I have this on all of my rotary chucks mounted up to fiber laser machines. Once we have this perfectly aligned and I tighten down the two mounting screws, I find that the rotary chuck is rock solidly mounted up to the machine. Before I finish the alignment of the rotary chuck up to the laser machine, I do need to jump into Lightburn software and set up a configuration file. That way Lightburn software and the fiber laser machine knows what chuck is connected up to the machine. In Lightburn, the first thing that I want to do is enable the rotary. If your button and text do not appear, navigate over to Edit, Settings, and there'll be a checkbox here, show rotary enable on main window. I have mine checked, I'll click okay, and I can enable the rotary. Next, I'm going to navigate to the top over to the rotary setup button. And this opens up a sub menu and I'll run through very quickly the settings that I have to get the rotary chuck set up. First of all, the rotary type, of course, we're using a chuck, we have it enabled. Here is the reverse rotary direction. Make note of where this is located. We're gonna be testing for this in just a few minutes. I highly recommend having this checked. Return to starting point after it's finished with the job. With a rotary chuck, if I need to do multiple passes, I wanna make sure that I have this checked. The split setup, we're gonna loop back to this in a few minutes. The rotary axis, you have your choice of X axis or Y axis. I always look at what direction this arrow is pointing and that arrow is going to coincide with if I have an object in the rotary, does that direction match up? And yes, it does. The rotary settings, steps per rotation on virtually every rotary chuck that I've ever used for a CO2 laser machine or for a fiber laser machine has been 12,800. 
the object diameter and the circumference. We're going to loop back to that in a few minutes when we talk about the split setup. Motor speed settings, I've never touched these. I've always left these as the light burn defaults and they've always worked perfectly well for me. Lastly, there's a test button. This test button is going to test the rotary setting of the steps per rotation. It is going to rotate the rotary chuck jaws 360 degrees in one direction and then 360 in the opposite direction. It's gonna make sure that we entered that steps per rotation correctly. I'll do that right now. It's back up at the top and it's going back to the other direction. Right back where it started. If I had a wrong number here, we would see that it went to rotate it the full 360 degrees. And I can demonstrate that here by typing in a different number. I'll put 7,500 in and hit that test button. And we'll see it stopped well short. It's still finished in the same spot, but it did not make a full 360 degree rotation. Of course, I'll put that back. I'm now ready to loop back and set the final alignment of the rotary chuck up to the laser machine. This is a pretty simple process. I'm going to be drawing a line within the Lightburn software. That line is going to be the same center line of what an object would be coming out of the rotary chuck. I'm going to make sure that that line in Lightburn software is perfectly centered within the workspace. That way, when I go to frame that line out, it's going to be perfectly centered coming out of the laser machine. I'm going to use that perfect center line coming out of the laser machine to move the rotary chuck around until it's aligned. This is how I ensure that the rotary chuck is moved to the correct position to be perfectly in line with the fiber laser machine. I'll start by grabbing the pen tool and I'm gonna draw a very long line here. I can press and hold the shift key to constrain that to a perfectly straight line. I'll highlight that line and press the letter P and it's gonna perfectly center that within the workspace, noting that I don't have the line extending outside of my workspace. Since I'm going to be working underneath the laser lens, aligning the rotary truck while that line is being framed, I wanna extra step of safety. So I'm going to change that line over to a tool layer. I do this because as a tool layer that will never fire the main laser inside the machine. That's that extra step of safety that I like. Once I have this set, I can hit the frame button and I'll have a nice laser line going in there. And now all I need to do is find something like this brass rod or a nice round pencil works perfectly well too. My preference is to use this brass rod. And I'll install that into the rotary chuck. It's just a matter of moving the rotary chuck back and forth until I have that framing line perfectly centered up on this brass rod that I have placed within the chuck. This looks good and I can tighten the two mounting screws down. The chuck is now perfectly aligned up to the rest of the laser machine and I don't need this alignment rod in the chuck anymore and I can remove that. In its place, I'm going to put an object in there that I can do some test engraving on. Today, I'm going to be using this old tumbler that actually doesn't engrave all that well and I've kept it just for doing layouts and test engravings just like we're doing in today's video. I'll get this installed. As I'm tightening the jaws on this tumbler, I'm making sure that I'm pressing on the tumbler to make sure that that tumbler is perfectly square against the jaws of the chuck. This way, when I run a job, I know that this tumbler is going to spin true with the rotary chuck. Before I move back into the computer, I wanna make sure that the area where I'm going to be doing the engraving is going to be parallel or even to my laser head. For this, I'm going to grab a little uh, keychain level and place that again over the area where I want to do the engraving. I'm going to check that level, not against earth level, but level against the laser head. And I know that my workbench, it is actually tilted a little bit. So that little bit of a tilt is going to show up here. I just want to make sure that that level matches the level down here. If I do need to make a slight adjustment, on the rotary chuck, there's two screws and that will allow this whole assembly to pivot 
up and down depending on what object I have in the rotary chuck. Just know that when I start loosening up these screws, I always put a hand underneath that material because as soon as these are loose enough, this has a tendency of just pivoting forward right away and I don't want to damage my work material. This looks good. We're ready to go back into light burn software. The next thing I'm going to check for is the direction of the rotation. And the best way I know to set this up is I'm going to engrave the number two. And I'll type in the number two. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and press the letter P to recenter that. This looks good. And I can hit the frame button. And I'd like to move that a little bit so I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard. That looks good. My line interval, I'm going to change that to 0 0.02. There's a very important setting within the engraving layer that I need to check. For this, I'll double click on that layer. And I need to have the scan angle match the direction that my rotary is facing. Right now I have crosshatch on, I'll need to disable that. I have the scan angle at 45 degrees and I'll change that to zero degrees. If I had my rotary facing north, south or up and down, I would need to change that scan angle by 90 degrees so that it too matches. I'll switch this back so it matches my setup and I can close out of the submenu. There's going to be two things within the rotary setup that we need to loop back to. We skipped those before and I want to show you what we need to do with those. The first one being the split setup. This is how many lines of engraving is the machine going to do before it pauses and waits for the rotary chuck to index or rotate slightly. I like to have this set at a very low number that is either the same as my line interval or a multiple of it. In this case, I'm using 0 0.04 with my line interval, of course, being 0 0.02. The overlap I set at zero. I don't need to have any overlap for that. The default in this area is something like uh, five millimeters and then the overlap is something uh, less than one millimeter. And while it goes very quickly, I've never had very good uh, results with that. I found that I get perfect results with this every time, no matter the diameter of the object I have in the rotary chuck. Speaking of the diameter, we're gonna loop over here to the object diameter. Each time I place a new size material within the rotary chuck, I do need to measure the diameter of the area where I'm doing the engraving. I recommend using a dial calipers. These you can get from any major online store. I think this one was about $25. And when I measure the diameter again in the area where I'm going to be doing the engraving, I am getting 87 millimeters, which is what I have entered in. Now, if I was going to be doing an engraving down at the very bottom here, that's where I would do the measurement because down near the bottom, I'm getting 76 millimeters. So this all looks good. And I can close that out. I'm going to get some glasses on and we'll do this first test engraving after I get the laser focus to the work material. Okay, that didn't take very long at all. And we're going to see that the number two is turning out backwards. That means I have to go back into rotary setup and reverse rotary direction. I'll click that and hit OK. I'm going to rotate the tumbler to a fresh spot. We'll do that right next to it. Hit the frame button, make sure everything looks good. Yup, that looks good. And I'll hit the start button once again. The second number two turned out perfectly, and most of all, it's facing the right direction. 
We're also going to see that when I did the engraving, I don't have that nice stainless steel look that we're typically looking for when we do these coated tumblers. And that's why I'm using this tumbler as my test tumbler because this tumbler, I've tried everything and it just doesn't engrave all that well, but it makes a really great test tumbler. Now that I've got the correct direction on the rotor chuck, I'm free to go out and start creating all kinds of projects. Now I know that we adjusted a lot of settings within Lightburn software to initially get the rotary chuck connected up to the machine. The next time that I use my rotary chuck, all I need to do is draw that center line within the work area of the Lightburn software and frame that line out. That's that center line that I use to align the rotary chuck up to the machine. And then the only other thing I need to do within the rotary setup screen is going to enter in that new object diameter or circumference depending on what I measure. That's the only thing that I have to change the next time that I use the rotary chuck. The rotary direction, the split size setup, the axis, and the steps per rotation, those all remain the same. Thanks for joining me as I shared my best method for setting up a rotary chuck up to a fiber laser machine. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Until next time, learn, create, and share.